More on this, let's bring in John Herps, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Ambassador Herps, thank you very much. Um, and it, unrelated to what uh, Benjamin Hall, if the Ukrainians think they need airplanes, John, why the hell don't we give it to them? Um, it's really unfortunate that the Biden administration made that decision. Um, I think they gave away the game when the Pentagon spokesman said they were afraid of its possible escalatory nature, i.e., they were intimidated by the thought that the Russians might find it provocative when Moscow has unleashed all-out hell on Ukraine over the past 16 days. That's simply silly and not, not worthy of a great power and not worthy of the efforts the Biden administration has set out to make sure this, this thing is not a complete catastrophe. I mean, Vladimir Putin says a lot of things. As you well know, he says a lot of things. Some of it's utter nonsense. But he can't dictate to us or I would think to NATO, how, when, where, and why we conduct ourselves. It's not up to him. That's up to us. And, and we should be saying, you know what, you got your nuclear weapon. Well, we've got our, you know, the question is, would we use our nuclear arsenal? You see where I'm going with this? I'm tired of being uh, lectured by Vladimir Putin or accepting his lectures. You're absolutely right. His war on Ukraine is actually a war on us because he said he wants to have major control, not just in Ukraine, but in our Baltic allies, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. So we have a, a vital American interest in helping Ukraine defeat Putin in Ukraine. That's the place to wage this fight without American troops. But we can only do that effectively if we send Ukraine all the military equipment it needs. And the Biden administration has been slow and timid in doing that. The MiGs issue makes that clear, but also the fact we only send stingers to Ukraine a, in late January. Mm -hmm. That's a disgrace. We have yet to send to Ukraine anti-ship missiles, which the Ukraine has asked for for years. Yeah. If we had sent them to Ukraine back in November or December, those warships that are currently bombing Odessa would not be there. Those great gains Russia has made in the South would not have happened. Yeah. These are all things we should, should and can do. Those are compelling points. Can I just get you one last thing, Ambassador, and thank Please. you for your time. Um, I'm trying to follow the peace talk such as it is. The reporting is not fabulous. I mean, I understand the military operations on the ground take precedence. But there are peace talks going on, Turkey, Israel, Russia, uh, Ukraine, and so forth. It seems as though Mr. Zelensky, President Zelensky, who I regard as an incredibly courageous man, but he's basically, I think, saying we will, we, Ukraine will stay out of NATO and we will let the, the Russians have Donetsk and so forth, wh whether as a sovereign country or so forth. Um, is that true? And, you know, why won't Putin accept that? Because those seem to be Zelensky, Putin's issues. Zelensky has not formally offered that. But he has hinted, certainly, about giving up on NATO membership. The reason why Putin does not accept that is he has terms that he wants to dictate to Ukraine, mm. meaning, quote, unquote, neutrality, complete demilitarization, the change of the leadership, what he calls the Nazi leadership of the Jewish president of Ukraine. Mm. And he wants to completely run the country. And of course, no country is, no leader is going to give up his country to an authoritarian thug like Mr. Putin. And in those talks that when Lavrov went to Turkey, those were the terms he dictated. The talks that happened on the Belarus border in Poland, these are the terms that are being offered by the quote unquote Russian negotiators. This is a piece of diktat so that Ukraine is completely at the mercy of, again, the authoritarian and the Kremlin. Mm. That's what's going on here. All right. Thank you for the update. Uh, Ambassador John Herbst, we appreciate it, sir. My pleasure.